set myself up, I want to remind you that this is indeed a ghost story. And ghost stories require intimacy, so if you're all the way in the back, I'd appreciate if you could come a little bit forward, pack up your stuff. And also, ghost stories don't really work well with laptops. So, unless you're live tweeting this particular story, I appreciate it. So, can I ask you all to please close your eyes with me? Close your eyes. Imagine yourself on a day in the year 2040. You're walking down the streets and you encounter a group of Wikipedians in the streets of Hong Kong or wherever the Wikimania is that year. Do you have a mental image in mind? I want to ask you to open your eyes now. <laughs> Is this what you saw? Yeah. Who, who had this image in their mind? So, no, okay. Two people. So I, I may have to step back a little bit and start at the beginning. I call this first story The Ghost of Notability. And the story begins, oddly enough, with the departure of our executive director, Sue Gardner, and the hiring of a new ED for the Wikimedia Foundation. The new executive director of the Wikimedia Foundation was a big fan of an idea called augmented reality. Augmented reality is the idea that we can literally enrich our world through information, facts, things that we pull from the net and project into our view. In fact, she was one of the early testers of a project by a large tech company, which I will inadvertently name several times throughout this talk, <laughs> and was very excited about finding ways to use augmented reality in the context of Wikipedia. In fact, she convinced the board that Wikipedia could not succeed unless it embraced the idea of augmented reality and this particular technology called glass. This was a, an early prototype, but eventually she met with this guy. And they started talking about what we could do together. 
between Wikipedia and this new technology called Glass, how could Wikipedians be empowered to document their reality using augmented reality? And it seemed like this was a hopeless cause, but one of the things that helped bootstrap the use of augmented reality by Wikipedians was a deal that she negotiated with this large <coughs> tech company. And the deal essentially consisted of free giveaways for the 10,000 most active Wikipedians. They all got a free Class Explorer edition at the company's annual conference. So there was a seed of Wikipedians who used augmented reality to document their world. Now what started to happen is that the large tech company in question started working with some app developers to create applications for Gloss that could be used to see around you the objects and places, the people that had articles in Wikipedia. Eventually, that application also allowed you to voice record improvements to those articles, to add to them, to take pictures. Glass, take a picture, and it would end up in Wikipedia. That was pretty awesome, but what started happening is that more and more people got their articles deleted that they were creating using Glass. And the reason that happened is that they ran up against notability because they wanted to take pictures of streets and of people that they saw in the restaurants where they were eating, and the notability guidelines didn't allow that. The community, the hardcore of the Wikimedia community, didn't want to change. But at that point, the Wikimedia Foundation was already heavily in bed with that large tech company. In fact, it was dependent on that large tech company's partnership, because in order to use this technology, you had to tie into its cloud-based infrastructure, which you controlled and gave it a large measure of control. So the large tech company eventually pushed through changes to the notability policies against the community's wishes. Those changes led to large numbers of community members leaving, but for a while, a new community was starting to thrive that used augmented reality to document the world. However, with most of the core Wikipedia contributors gone from the olden days, and the large tech company in question controlling most of the technology, innovation stopped. No new projects were started, no new ideas came to light. And eventually, in one of the company's annual spring cleaning efforts, it was announced that Wikipedia would no longer be available after July 2025. All the contents of the encyclopedia would be deleted at that date. And so ends our first story. I call the second ghost the ghost of social. Again, we begin the story with the new executive director joining the Wikimedia Foundation. In the job interview with the board of directors, one of the first questions she asked is, I don't understand why Wikipedia doesn't have a like button. It doesn't make any sense, like it's 2014, where is the like button? I expect that nowadays on a website that I'm on. She didn't like the answer, she didn't like the answer that the board was giving her. She didn't like the answer she heard, and in fact, after she was hired, it only took two weeks for like buttons to start making their appearance on Wikipedia. In fact, more and more social features were added to Wikipedia. Facebook Connect was added to make it easier to log in and join the projects. Did I mention Facebook? <laughs> it started to become possible to share anything you do on your timeline, anything you do in Wikipedia, 
So if you uploaded an image and it became featured, that was an event that your friends would be notified of. If you did anything that could draw new contributors, your friends would hear about it. And so a lot of new people joined Wikipedia, which was great for a while. The community increased in diversity. At that point, the executive director thought that Wikipedia needed another kick in the butt in order to truly embrace the change that social media could bring. So she engaged a large gamification consulting company. And the idea was, if we use gamification, we can make editing Wikipedia truly addictive. The idea was to limit the number of edits a user could make per day. The limit that was put in place was 50 edits. If you wanted to make more than 50 edits in a given day, you needed to convince your friends to join Wikipedia. Every time you convinced a friend, you get your edit quota got increased. And Wikipedians were quite persistent in persuading their friends to join Wikipedia. So more and more people started joining the projects, but what started to happen is that those people interacted mostly with the commenting features and the feeds and the buttons, and they didn't actually edit the article content. So eventually the article content was scrapped and was replaced with feeds or real-time events about the articles in Wikipedia from your friend's postings. So you could read about important events in free software that your friends posted about, but the article was hidden uh, from you. And Wikipedia was listed as an encyclopedia game in the social media's gaming directory. To its credit, it had more than one billion players a month. So ends the second story. Again, the story begins with a new ED. The board of directors decided to hire a staunch advocate for the community as the next executive director. The successful candidate had been an advocate against some of the foundation's initiatives in the past, including, for example, the image filter and the visual editor. The candidate was in favor of supporting the community directly as much as possible. The candidate believed that Wikipedia was under siege from large tech companies that were trying to threaten the small village of Wikipedia. He wanted to protect the Wikipedia core values, and he argued successfully for returning to quality as a core priority for the projects. Key projects that the Foundation had argued for in the past were scrapped. The visual editor project was shut down because, simply put, if you don't want to learn markup, then what the hell are you doing? Mobile editing was shut down because, after all, mobile editors got reverted at a 1% higher rate. So clearly the quality was not sufficient. To his credit, he put a lot of emphasis on making the site fast to load and making it possible to use Wikipedia entirely without JavaScript in all circumstances. <laughs> However, Wikipedia's community continued to dwindle. Eventually, the bad faith editors who came and joined the project started to outnumber the good faith editors who came and joined. This was a problem because you needed enough people to revert spam and vandalism. So a new measure was put in place that any edit by a new user would be reverted by default. <laughs> if you wanted your edit to stick, you would have to put a template on a notice board and argue for it to be applied by an experienced user. The effect of this change was that there were no more new editors. Eventually, Wikipedia got older and older and older. And this is a photograph from <laughs> Wikimedia 2070. In Berlin, the average age of the contributors who were present was about 
75. <laughs> there were about 30 people who came. In the year 2100, the last Wikipedian died. <laughs> However, the content of Wikipedia was entrusted to the Wikimedia Foundation, which had stashed away enough funds to preserve the backups forever. And so ends the final story. I picked these three stories for a reason. Notability, in my view, is perhaps the single most challenging founding policy of our projects because it inherently limits the growth and the scope of what we can do. The idea that in order for something to be included in our project, it has to be notable as established by reliable published sources inherently makes it hard to grow a community that deals with reality in all its diversity and breadth, especially as more and more of what we consider sources are blogs, Twitter feeds, and other media that are no, not traditional, conventional media. So whether it's through augmented reality or by other means, I think the notability um, policy will pose a real threat to Wikipedia in the long run. It will mean that we either have to change that policy or it will simply not be possible for us to be part of certain innovations in certain communities and eventually we risk being displaced or dispersed in our efforts. Social media poses great opportunities and great threats. We often tend to focus only on the threats of things like gamification. But I deeply believe that in the year 2013, people have an expectation that they can interact about the things they do in the with the friends that they love and care about and share their experiences with in social media. So I do think we have to find ways, gracefully, to partner and to think about how Wikipedia activity can be made visible to your friends in your networks to bring in a more diverse contributor base. And finally, I want to talk about change. I started editing Wikipedia in 2001. At that point in time, everyone thought we were crazy, including the people who were editing in 2001. It was just simply not conceivable that this project would go anywhere. It was trying something that was impossible to let anyone just edit an encyclopedia. It was crazy. And since then, Wikipedia has become important and people have become protective of it, which is good. As Sue pointed out, Wikipedia matters. It matters to our lives. But in protecting Wikipedia, we have to be careful that we don't lose our ability to try crazy things, to try completely radical new ideas that might scare us, frighten us. Things like the visual editor seem like dangerous changes. The software could break and content could be damaged. New contributors could join whose only intent is to vandalize. But if we didn't have the ability to manage such changes, then Wikipedia wouldn't be anywhere today. So these are my stories and my hope that we will embrace change without being terrified by it. Thank you. I would love your comments. You don't. Can we get a mic? Do you have a mic? Uh, well, there is or you can just shout. I know, Vito, you can shout. So. Actually, in this theater, we do have the luxury of uh, why didn't you just shout me, but...
back in 2001, December 2001, Wikipedia was running on a software called UseModWiki, which was a 60 kilobyte Perl script that stored all pages as, as flat files. And it, it was beautiful, like it was really elegant, um, it also sucked. Um, but uh, a couple months later, a volunteer named Magnus Mesko, who's amazing, rewrote the software and he wrote, rewrote it in PHP. And it sucked, too. <laughs> it had many, many shiny features. Unfortunately, all those shiny features couldn't even scale to the size that Wikipedia was at the time. So um, when you were loading a page in January 2002, it would take about 20, 30 seconds uh, for anything to happen. It was incredibly slow, it was incredibly painful. I, was, I had just become an editor at the time, and I thought the project was done for honestly thought it was done for it because uh, something like this could kill a project. But the opposite actually happened. Um, what started to happen is that the community members started to rally around rewriting the software and improving it. That is the time when folks like Ryan Weber, Lee Daniel Parker, uh, and others started to get involved in software development and rewrote the software two or three times until it became what we now know as MediaWiki. And the reason I tell that story is that I think we forget that we are an open source project, and I think we forget that we are in this together sometimes. Like, I, I, I see some of the responses to things like the visual editor, and people are saying, like, how could you roll out something that's not finished yet? Are you fucking kidding me? Like, <laughs> <laughs> what, what side do you think you're on? <laughs> like, we, we, We work on this stuff together, right? And and can I can I just ask the audience how many of you have ever edited a template? You are all developers. <laughs> In fact, you make stuff that breaks our stuff, so thank you. <laughs> so we have to work together on this. Like uh, Wikipedia is a very unusual beast, and we tend to forget how unusual it is, especially the ones who joined in like 2008 and 2009. And I've seen Wikipedia as a mature project with finished articles and beautiful templates that just work, and you've learned the markup, and you figured out how it works, and it's like, don't break my stuff, it works. Well, we kind of do have to break things regularly in order to make things better. And we have to do that together, like because we all are responsible for this thing, and we've all made it um, what it is in the first place. So I think that the message that, that works with people, and that I think people can hear is, we are building this thing together. And when people get scared is when they worry that we're imposing change on them. And I think when they can partner with us is when we invite them to do so. Aaron. So simulation in uh, introducing new software is uh, something that some, comp some uh, organizations do better than others. Uh, I think if you do it too early and in the wrong way, you inflict a lot of pain. I think uh, we have examples of some excellent features that uh, have not been embraced because of this kind of mistake. On the other hand, uh, the ideal example I can think of is Wikidata, which uh, was introduced on many wikis and uh, almost with uh, zero resistance. So I think there are lessons to be learned here about how to uh, roll out features with uh, high friction to the society uh, using early adopters and get people behind them when they're, uh, you know, until they're quite ready and not uh, get such a big resistance which uh, then we hear from, you know, you, uh, from the developer from the foundation that no, you should actually embrace this even though we know that many people are not happy with it today. I agree entirely that we can always be smarter about how we push change out the door in the first place. And one of the things that I really like that has worked really well is what the mobile team has been doing, which is to very prominently um, integrate in its user interface a little try the mobile beta switch, which when you turn it on, you get all the latest shiny features. So mobile editing was available in beta for how many months, Thomas? Like quite a bit bit of time before it went into production. And, and so were many other features like mobile watch list, mobile login, and so forth. And it helps. It does definitely help a ton, no question about it. Uh, and you can do gradual ramping up uh, of usage within those beta periods. 
But I, I want to come back to the point I made earlier with regard to Visual Editor, but also some other features, which is Wikipedia is not like other sites. Like if, if you really think it is, then you're not looking closely enough. Like no, no other major website has a system of gadgets like the one we do. No other major website has a system of templates like the one we do. Uh, no other major website is as multilingual as, as ours. And so there are many different ways for, for things to break in the interaction with the things that the community is doing. And so we basically have a choice. You can either run a cathedral or you can run a bazaar. If you want to run a bazaar, you have to be open and you have to em embrace the idea that as you introduce new things into the system, things will be messy for a while and you have to sort it out together. If you want to run a cathedral where just beautiful software gets pushed out, well, you, you get usually crappy software um, being delivered uh, on a regular basis with beautiful QA processes associated with it. That's not, not the model that, that Wikipedia is based on. So I, I agree we can do better in the way we ramp up and the way we introduce change and embracing the idea that there are many community members who want to be part of that process and get their help early on. But I also think there's an in, in, inevitable cost to what Wikipedia is, which is a kind of do-it-yourself website where everything is made by the community in partnership with us. And so there are many more opportunities for uh, user experience to be opt optimized or user experience to break, frankly. How do you want to? So I want to go back to what Vivo was um, talking about. So um, I think I think those things are three things that you brought up are really interesting. Um, at the same time, I don't think it's a uh, presentation or a communication that's going to result in change. I think change is a process. One of the things that I've observed. Um, this is my fourth Wikimania. One of the things I've observed is I think since the first one we've been talking about social. Um, at the same time, our conversation about social hasn't gotten smarter and it hasn't gotten sharper. Um, in my view, it's still a vague notion of there are parts of social that are good, but there, there are parts of social that we need to be careful about. Um, and one of my concerns is that we've been talking about these things for a long time, but there doesn't seem to be a process in place by which we get smarter about these things. Um, so I think my question for probably both you and everybody here is how do we make that happen? Right? Because I think the worst thing that could happen is a year from now we come to Wikimania and the conversation is still the same. Uh, from my perspective, I, like, I don't think we're gonna solve the problem, but I think we should be taking steps in clarifying what that future should be. How many of you have ever participated in? How many of you have ever participated in an ISC office hour meeting or anything like that? Okay. So um, I, I really like the idea that we do that more systematically, and that we find new ways to um, advertise the existence of these venues where we talk to to the community and we talk as a group. Um, Fabrice, is Fabrice series, I think he's giving a, a session right now. Um, uh, he, he's been leading this, this process called Roundtables, um, which are these meetings that started out in part as face-to-face -face meetings, and he's been doing them online now as well, using Hangouts, uh, as well as IC. Um, and, and the purpose of those meetings is to really just uh, sit down together and talk about some of these hard questions around, like, okay, so what, what parts of social in the broadest sense actually make sense in the context of Wikipedia, and which parts don't? And I, I, I've never felt in any of my conversations with, with the community, I am a long-time member of the community as well, um, that we are resistant to, to having those conversations. Never. I've never felt that. Um, I felt that there are normal uh, fears and concerns that people have um, when they start talking about Facebook. And I share those concerns too. Privacy, um, integration with like a single monolithic entity that wants to control all the data. Like all of that stuff is freaking scary and we have to be really careful and conscious of those risks. Um, I think what tends to happen when we don't talk to each other is that we stereotype each other. So uh, the foundation tends to think of the community as like, you just don't like change, you just don't want to embrace it. And I don't think that that uh, little image in the presentation notwithstanding, uh, that was a, a caricature. I think that the truth is that the community wants change and embraces it. Uh, I think and the opposite is also true. I think the foundation is sometimes being stereotyped as a clueless 
uh, about community, clues about privacy, clues about risks, um, and that's bullshit. Like, uh, the foundation has uh, dozens of community members in it, some of whom have been active uh, in, in Wikipedia for many, many years, and to understand those conversations, have been part of those conversations. Um, so we, we have to be careful not to stereotype each other, but that's what happens when groups don't talk effectively. So I think the answer is, is conversation. Can we hear from some, some non-WMF people? And non-chapter people? <laughs> just, kidding. <laughs> just, just kidding, just kidding. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. Thank you, and I really need the microphone because my voice is completely broken, so thank you. Um, yeah, and also answering to, um, to the open question, I agree that um, the process of uh, change, of, 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 of reaching change, um, needs some very precise ideas and then later measures. Nevertheless, I'm, I'm very grateful for Eric's uh, presentation because uh, change is also subjected and based on uh, the scope of your perspective. And um, you need to start with that when your perspective is limited, uh, no matter what subject it's about. Um, th then you also only have, what is, what's wrong with my arm? Hold, hold the mic further away. Okay, I'm too loud, great. Um, yeah, and uh, that's basically the, the power of storytelling, in my opinion, and I think uh, your stories worked out uh, pretty well. And you, uh, uh, took the effort to create some kind of uh, campfire atmosphere and uh, dim, the, dim the light. And like every good uh, campfire story, stories need to be retold. And I can only encourage everybody in this room to, uh, yeah, uh, take the opportunity and uh, retell the story and see what happens. Thank you. Other thoughts? I think you had your hand up for a while. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure if I'm portraying your, your ghost stories correctly, but it seemed to me to be a lot about technology and not as much about politics and cultural issues and stuff like that. So I was kind of wondering if you had some, some ghosts of culture and ghosts of politics politics that you that you thought of and discarded before the, before the talk or, or see that as a potential problem in the future for Wikipedia? Or that's, Wikipedia. that's a fantastic question, seriously. Um, I, I view the notability thing as a culture thing and I uh, uh, talked about that in the context of, of uh, technology because it seems so obvious to me that um, as new technological opportunities arise that the concepts of notability and reliability that we apply today are just going to break completely. Um, but to me, they're already broken. Like, I felt that way for a long time. I felt that deletionism is actively hurting our mission for a long time. And thank you. And, and, and so I think that's, that's a deeply, deeply cultural issue and, and one that we can, as the foundation, uh, only help so much with because it's a conversation within the community at, at large. And uh, um, ha has anyone seen SJ's blog post about Newpedia? Okay, of course you guys have. So, so um, uh, Samuel Klein, one of our board members, wrote, wrote this uh, fantastic blog post, which I think was inspired by a breakfast conversation with Maker or something. And uh, basically, uh, what he proposed in in the blog post was, "Hey, wouldn't it be great if we if we created a project where all these policies didn't exist and people could just write articles without being bothered by by all the complexity of of, of policy?" And uh, when they're done. Um, we'll move them over to Wikipedia, and uh, so it's like a drafting space, and we'll, we'll call it Newpedia, N-E-W-pedia. And so those of you with, with a bit of history knowledge about Wikipedia know, of course, that Wikipedia was preceded by Newpedia, N-U-pedia, which was a drafting, uh, which was intended to be the final destination for articles written in Wikipedia. That was the idea of how, how it should work. And in fact, um, uh, up until like, June 2003 or so, Jimmy thought he would call the Wikimedia Foundation the Newpedia Foundation. Mm -hmm. And the, the idea being that uh, there's the stable project that publishes the encyclopedia, maybe even printed versions of it, and then the Wikipedians are doing all the crazy drafting stuff. And of course that didn't work out. And the point of that is that 
um, really, it is a deep cultural issue. Uh, Wikipedia is at a, at a point where it, it feels like the stale thing. It feels like the thing that no longer has the same vibrancy as, as it used to, and, and that's that's uh, something that, that we have to fix together. There are other cultural issues that scare me um, uh, that, that are, I think, more ten tangible, I think more addressable by us together. I'll give you an example. We talk about diversity a lot. Um, and when we talk about diversity, we talk about what deters different cultural groups from contributing to Wikipedia. Um, how many of you know what Twinkle is? Okay, so uh, Twinkle, uh, Huggle, and other similar tools like that are tools that are used to patrol vandalism, uh, primarily in English Wikipedia, also in a few other wikis uh, that imported them over. And when you look at the pages for these projects, one of the icons that is frequently used to symbolize patrolling of vandalism is a policeman. Do you think there might be any cultural issues with an image of a policeman? Do you think there might be any groups or demographics that might be deterred from participating in a project that prominently uses images of policemen as the symbols of patrolling change? I can tell you there are groups who might be deterred by that, and that's not because they're anarchists or radicals, it's because they experience police maybe as a force of repression and not a force of well, control and law and order and such things. And similarly, it's a male policeman, of course, it's a police man, and not a police woman. And uh, if you look at sort of the templates that are used for cleanup or, or for indicating issues with articles, like a lot of the graphics that are used, like uh, like images of construction workers, like men in boots, and then then if you look at like the images that are used for gratification and thanking, you might find like images of ladies in skirts, and so those those kinds of choices that are made by the community reflect its biases and reflect who who's in the community today, and we always insert bias into our conversations. We always do. We always have to be conscious of that. We always have to be making an effort to make the unseen visible to ourselves. Who's not at the table? Who's not in the conversation? And why are they not there? Hey, Michael. Okay. Um, technically, it's one. But yeah, it's up to everyone whether to continue or not. Why don't we do a couple more and then we'll, we'll disperse. How's that sound? I mean, I, I think that one thing I think it's worth remembering is that change has never been uncontroversial within these communities. And I haven't been around quite as long as you have, but uh, I mean, I, I, uh, I certainly remember lots of people just doing things and having enormous like amount of backlash from the community and just sort of saying, well, like, it's gonna be fine, we'll talk about it, um, or they just do it first and then there's a fight, or they suggest it, there's an argument for a long time and people do it anyway or something like that. And I think that, that, uh, that, that change has never been uncontroversial. I think that there have been a few things that have changed about the community that have uh, made it more difficult. Some of these things are rules, some of them are the creation of a large professional staff for the foundation who are doing things in ways that feel that they should be accountable to the foundation in a way that is different than the way that the volunteers who were making, doing similar things in the past, didn't feel that they needed to be accountable because they just felt that they were normal, normal people like anybody else. And I think that that's a challenge in learning how to negotiate that is something which is really tricky for an organization to get right. And I think that it's something we can think about improving on. Um, I also think that um, part of the, so, so Newpedia is actually, this, you know, SJ's Newpedia idea is something that we, we've been planning on sort of doing as an April Fool's thing, but also a serious thing. Uh, launching seriously uh, you know, on April 1st for years now, and uh, decided that you know, we should talk about it long enough. We just put it out there. People, maybe other people can help us with it. Um, but, but the serious point is that very often, uh, a, a lot of the, you know, as organizations collect, you know, weight and inertia, very often the way to do new things is through organizations that are more or less separate from the ones that we've created. That may be different wikis, it might be different, totally different organizations, right? It might be different projects that just separate themselves from the past. And I think that um, a lot of interesting innovation has happened in, uh, like the most interesting innovation last, I don't know, a few years has happened. I mean, Wikipedia is an example of something, you know, which, which uh, uh, I think, I don't know, maybe this is just, you know, from my perspective, it looks like it was easier to do, you know, outside of the Wikimedia Foundation, you know, in Germany, but, you know, in other places. Just, well. just to jump in on the yeah. Wikidata thing, like, one of the cool things about Wikidata, 
time. Who knows how the big data notability policy works? Is there any, anyone here who knows the big data notability? Amir, can you explain it to the last, audience? Last time I checked, uh, the data is, uh, is, uh, it can be an item of data, an article in this one. There's more to it than that, actually. You know, one, one of the things that's cool about it is that if in order to um, represent the connections between multiple things, you have to create a thing that doesn't have an entry in Wikipedia, you're allowed to do so. And that's pretty awesome because it means that you can actually document people, like if you want to document genealogy, for example, you can document people who don't have an entry in, in Wikipedia. And uh, that's that's like I, in, the, in the presentation that, that the Wikidata folks gave, that one of the things that they, they said is like, we have like one core policy and the core policy is use common sense. Yes, thank you, <laughs> right? Because they don't inherit all this this existing stuff. And I'm not saying like all the existing, existing Wikipedia policies are wrong or anything like that. Um, but truly, I think notability is broken and uh, it, it's probably the hardest thing to fix. Like it's probably the one thing in order to fix it, you may really have to create a completely separate space because Wikipedians may not accept a change to that policy even if it was enforced like by board mandate or whatever, just because it's such an entrenched view that that's what an encyclopedia is, that's what it ought to be. Like there are people whose roles uh, have consisted for years of deleting the crap um, from Wikipedia and as they see it, like the, ooh, the 20,000 Linux distribution has just got a Wikipedia to nuke it. Uh, so there, there are people who make that part of their behavioral pattern. I'm not saying those, those are bad people, I'm just saying that's a pattern that's established itself pretty deeply and Wikipedia is probably the hardest one to change and probably the one where I feel the most that change may have to come from outside. Yeah. I mean, and I would just, and I said this yesterday during the, the other Imagining Wikipedia session, but I think that we need to remember that, that the reason that this stuff is important and the reason is that we're here is because, not because we want to perpetuate Wikipedia as a website or the foundation or the chapters out there, but because we want to promote the dissemination, the, the, the sort of collection and dissemination of free knowledge and the empowerment of people to sort of uh, engage in defining the world and the knowledge about the world. And I think that that very often uh, and in incredible ways we've been able to do that within these institutions and organizations and in many ways we've historically done it outside and that I think that you know we need to believe that you know we should go ahead and do it inside you know this these projects and organizations and outside and have faith that that you know to the extent that the you know foundation and our movement and our projects are on the right track that they will follow and adopt these things in the way that they have adopted important work like Wikidata more recently and lots of other things in the past as well. I do believe that too. Uh, we've got one last comment from Ines um, right in the back. Can we take Ines question or comment? So hi. Um, as a Wikimedia has been heavily involved in some of the past times. Sebastian, sorry, I not working right. Didn't see you on this day. Can you read? Yeah. yeah? All right. Um, this is more of a request, really, um, a request to the foundation, really. Um, you know, we were talking earlier about a safe and stable foundation that's been built over the past six years um, where Wikipedia is safe and we have a very right good um, basis to do a lot of things. So I, my request is to actually do a lot of things um, and really, really, really use technology as a catalyst to maybe change some things that are happening in communities or that are not happening in communities. Um, you know, technology has been a catalyst for a lot of change in many different ways outside of Wikimedia. At the same time, within Wikimedia, we never actually build a community that is embracing change or embracing growth in the sense that you know things have be working in one way today, you might be working a different way tomorrow, and even work in a third way three or four years from now. Um, what you're working on with the visual editor is something that hasn't changed in 10 years. How we edit Wikipedia has not changed in 10 years. So when you start going in there and saying, all right, we'll do something completely different, or maybe different, then there's resistance. But I think that's fine, I think it's important. And actually what I'd like to see is to have the foundation break much more things, more often, change things, so that actually the normal sense is Things are changing all the time. You know, these people, there are millions and millions of people, hundreds of millions of people using Facebook all over the world. And many of them aren't aware, and some of them are, that there are changes happening to Facebook every single week. In groups, in cohorts, A-B testing, all kinds of stuff. But Facebook itself is changing its technology all the time. 
And that's the normal, um, the normal way of how Facebook operates. It's not the normal way how Wikipedia has operated. I like to see that change. And I like to see that you know these kind of um, technology breakthroughs and um, changes and just try trials be happening much more often, so that there is a little editor and echo and notifications and all that fun stuff, and just try and see what sticks. And those things that don't stick, keep working on them and change it every week, so that the normal thing for technology is to change in Wikipedia as well. And then maybe. That you, even then, that could be a catalyst for change happening within the community as well, because maybe the change part becomes the norm, not the unusual. Thank you, Sebastian, Troy, for misidentifying you in the dark. Um, I think I think we're going to close there since folks are starting to you know, head out for lunch. So thank you for coming to the session. <laughs>